episode 88 of the FOMO cast. Chris is here. Titus is here. I'm here. Hello, YouTube. Don't know what happened with that last video. Tried re editing it like four times. Sorry, you have to do with the weird vo audio. What off. happened? The audio is off of the words. So I don't really? know what happened. Yeah, I think what happened was I exported it from the. Didn't do it from the actual recording app. I did it from a different app. The so sort it was of like a Kung app. Fu movie? Yeah, exactly. It was off. So, hello and welcome to episode 88. Want to uh, make sure you check out all of our our sponsors, which is none right now. So, uh, I want to thank everyone who does frequent it. I um, got some new listeners when I was in training. Connor, uh, I'm going to go over the stuff for you, bud, because he has some stuff we talked about, about the Mandalorian with, um, uh, with Andrew, but Andrew's not here to confirm. We actually found some stuff out after we finished recording. Freaking Disney put out this big old map, and now I have more info. Um, uh, but make sure to go to facebook.com slash FOMOcast, Twitter FOMO underscore cast, for more podcast on uh, Instagram, and go to our patreon.com slash FOMOcast. Also, make sure to go to the Pod Bros Network. I've actually been slacking on uploading my the podcast to there, so tomorrow I'll be doing all of the last three episodes up on podbrosnetwork.com, but there's a lot of stuff going on. On that network at all times, lots of wrestling stuff going on. It's the perfect time, especially with shows coming back. Things are going to be getting hectic. And also make sure, um, go to Radio Underland. I love the podcast. It's more adult, but it is a lot of fun. They cover a lot of interesting topics, like Britney Spears' conservatorship. Uh, they got a little political stuff. They get a lot of liberty. They have had three libertarian candidates on their podcast. Good for them. Legitimate pot. Legitimate people that who are running for office. Uh, president? Um, yeah, for president. Who's running for president for the Libertarian? I don't remember any of their names, but they have legitimate, and here's the problem is they're never going to get very far because, you know, <sighs> you know how politics work, but yeah, so you got that, and then make sure, like, if you're, if you're not watching us on YouTube right now, go to youtube.com slash FOMOcast podcast, or if you've just searched FOMOcast, it will come up, like the channel, subscribe, uh, share the videos, like the videos. I usually put them out, you know, middle of the week when I got a little bit of extra time. But um, yeah, do all that. Um, so we're, we got a lot of a lot of movie stuff. I watched two movies on my flight, so there, there are two movies I was surprised by. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, actually, one I watched the flight, one I watched at home, um, and then um, we got some TV news. Uh, obviously, some stuff news about Apple. Okay, everyone already knows about it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, and then some gaming movie, and then I think, let me look at that one. That one's like gaming, but it's kind of sad, but kind of predictable. So I'll cover that after I correct. So we talked about The Mandalorian last time, and it's going to be a TV show on Disney+, Plus, which I, I am a founder. I'm a part of the Founders Circle. So hello what to all the other founders out there. What does that mean, um, Basically, they did a thing where you could get three years of Disney+, Plus for $140. Uh -huh. And for me personally, a I don't... Year? Uh, no, for for three years. Okay, it's so flat. It ends up being like three ninety eight a month compared to the six ninety nine a month. So I'm saving half. Right. And then um, because what they're gonna do is um, there's a new thing called uh, ESPN Plus out there right now. Right. People hate it because it's got kind of kind of glitchy, but they're working on it. It's good. They're gonna have a new show called Peyton's Place on it that looks hilarious. I don't know if you've seen the commercial for it. Isn't that going already? Yes, it is. The one where he dunks his head and he comes out being a Bears fan. <laughs> No. And he, you missed that one? Yeah. No. So it's the dude Norm from Cheers. Right. And he's with another guy, and they're wearing all the beer, the bear stuff with the mustaches, and they're talking to Peyton Manning, and they're like, he's just like, oh, okay, all right. And they're pouring beer like it's a baptism into this thing. And so he's sitting there, and he's just looking around, and he's like, all right, well, we're going to do this. And he, they dunk his head, and when they pull him back out, a mustache. he has a mustache, glasses, and a bear's head, and he goes, Packer suck. <laughs> he screams it. And just the way he says it is so funny. But, um, so what they're going to do is, is Disney's going to have a package with Hulu, ESPN Plus, and Disney Plus for, I think it's like twelve ninety nine or thirty nine nine a month, which is a great deal. Right. But for me, I already have Hulu at five ninety nine, So why am I going to screw that up? And so I'm like, I don't need ESPN Plus. I might, my in-laws have ESPN if I want to watch ESPN. I don't have time most of the time to watch ESPN. You don't ESPN. have cable? I do right now. I'm going to cancel. I have AT&T now. They keep changing stuff because DirecTV now is no longer a thing. And ATT now, because I think D DirecTV now got so much bad publicity. Why is that? Because they, of bad they, their services? They changed a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'd rather just cancel that, which it's right now it's twenty nine ninety nine a month, but I get free HBO. So I'd rather cancel that and sign up for HBO. I think HBO is nine ninety nine a month if I need it. You know, if not, 
I know they do free views. I'll wait till the stuff gets on the whole. I'll binge watch whatever show, which we do have some HBO news, which I'm kind of. Uh. But yeah, so Disney Plus. If you if you signed up for this one, you became a part of the far, founder circle. And usually, what that means is they're probably going to send something out when the network when it's going to drop. They'll probably give it to you like a week or two early or something like that. They're beta testing it in the Netherlands right now in a small market, and it's actually phenomenal. People are loving it, and they said that. They're sticking to their guns where Disney Plus is actually, um, when you go other places, you can still use it. Because that's the problem. People, people don't know. If I go to L.A., I can't, my AT&T uh, now will have problems linking up to my stuff down here because I'll be using internet and everything down in L.A. So they kind of, it's, it's a little bit glitchy. This one says, nope, you're going to be able to get the same stuff that you had. Because obviously some countries have different stuff, like Netflix in England has a lot of the DC stuff that we can't get here, but we have to subscribe for. They get it on Netflix. So it's like all these deals, different countries barter. So, um, the countries barter? Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, Netflix in Britain, they have they negotiated with DC over there because DC wasn't doing as well, I guess, with the app. It's like, well, we'll put the stuff on there, and they'll work with Netflix to get them to, to watch the show kind of thing. Gotcha. So um, because HBO Plus is coming out, and that's going to be a part of that kind of thing. I HBO believe. Plus? Yeah, I think it's called HBO Plus. Um, it's going to be a new network, basically, where they're going to um, they're sending a bunch of uh, shows there from DC. But they already have HBO on demand. No, this is like a whole new network. This is like shows you only can get on HBO Plus. It's the, it's the game now, man. Everyone's playing that game, trying to see what they can do. Yeah, yeah. No, CBS not. has Twilight Zone and the Star Trek show, so they're going to have two Star Trek shows. It's too many. They're going to have the Picard one and the other one that's just the regular, regular like a Star Trek show. So we'll see. But where I was going, well, so since I'm a founding member, I might get a little bit early access. Who knows? I just, it was a great deal. Couldn't pass it up. Well, they have Mandalorian. And we talked about it. It's going to be there day one. It is live action. Now, the Mandalorian's a bounty hunter? So the Mandalorian is a race of people that are more, they're more prone to becoming bounty hunters. I haven't gotten as deep in it as I know some of my friends have, where there is just basically, they're almost like tribal. They're, they're like the space version of Samoans, basically. They have a lot of culture. They believe in family, things like that, but, you know, they got to make Is that the ones they make the clones from? Yes, it is. So, Bo- uh, Jango Fett is who they make the clones off of. Is that Jango Fett? Jango Fett in that? No, he's not in that. Jango Fett died in the, in the original trilogy. So, who is this? Is this, like, after the trilogy? When so, this it's set... Basically, they said it's set after episode four and before episode five. Four was... I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm an idiot. After episode three, before episode four, I believe. Three is Return of the Jedi? No. Three is the... Three is the Revenge of the Sith. And then four is A New Hope. Four is A New Hope. All right. So, and they said that basically they're going to show... I think that's what it was... It's it's somewhere in there. I can't remember a hundred percent. No, 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 no. I'm wrong. It's after one, two, three, four, five. It's after six before seven. Sorry, that's six what it is. Uh, Return I, of the hold Jedi. on, hold on. We don't have your phone. Thank you. No. So let me look real quick because it's it's kind of confusing because I, I had it all written down and I had it ready to go, but guess what happens when you're recording on your computer? I hope my internet works, but. No, so basically, the way, when it takes, because the thing, the reason why I knew it had to take place not close to the original trilogy was because you can see the bounty hunter IG88 flying around in one of the trailers. Okay. And he is seen in Jabba's palace when he's saying you need to capture Han Solo. So he's one of the bounty hunters that goes out with Bosk and uh, Boba Fett. So I was like, okay, this dude looks really familiar. Okay, it has to be in this timeline. So I can't remember. I know, Connor, I'm sorry I'm embarrassing you, but he, um, he explained to me in text message that it takes place, I want to say, it's basically like a Star Wars Rebels uh, kind of thing. Because there, everyone's been asking, um, you know, when does uh, Will, what's-his-face, show up, uh, Boba Fett? You know, will he be in the new the new show? Yes. So, well, I don't know. The answer is yes. I'll say it right now. <laughs> you, can, you heard it here first on Fumblecast. <laughs> He's going to be in the show. No, I'm not going to say that yet. So Star Wars, Wars timeline. So yeah, so, so where does Rogue One fit into Star Wars? So yeah, it's 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 insane because it's literally 
Well, I talked with Connor in depth um, about how they change so much stuff because they keep getting rid of things. They get rid of this because basically when Disney bought them, there was a thing called Legends, which basically was it was canon for the movies. Right. But then they're like, nope, not canon anymore. So everyone's like, well, then what does that mean for the rest of the... Um, well, that's right. They threw all that stuff out. They threw a bunch of it out. Would you be? Are you mad as a fan that they just like took everything you believed and just flushed it down the toilet? No, and said, because you'll take it because you're a fan. I mean, the thing for me is that I mean I've watched this so much, and I've seen so much of the other stuff that gets added in, and there is issues obviously with um, you know people people want to say oh this doesn't count this is this is this this is that hold on a second let's see. Bloodline, Force Awakens, Phantom of the Menace, Revenge of the Sith. That's just the original ones. Um, but there, there's just too much, and you can tell from some of the people they actually, um, they, they kind of. I don't know if they. I don't know if they actually. It's hard to explain. It is, I don't know if they actually like learn off of the movies, but it feels like some of the stuff is like, oh hey. This is what we're doing with with the movies. It it actually is, you know, we're it's not canon anymore, but we're going to go ahead and we're gonna make it canon by reintroducing it into the universe. So Mandalorian. It does upset you as a fan. No, because I know what they're trying to do is make everything better. You know what I mean? Maybe. Does it make it better? I think so. Well, there you go. I think them... I, I don't like the fact that some of the stuff doesn't get credit for it, though. You know, because that, that is a, a tough thing for... You know what I mean? It, it it makes tough for... It makes it it does make it tough for some people because they're like, well, you know, this is how it always used to be. So, you know, it doesn't always... Who is the Mandalorian? Connection to the Mandalorian... Pedro Pascal, I'm actually really excited to see him as the head character. Who is Pedro? Pedro Pascal, well, uh, he was in Narcos. Uh, yeah. I was going to say Napoleon Dynamite. No. That'd be cool if that guy was in it. You mean the actual Pedro? Yeah. Okay, so... There's a distinct time when they have been provided... Uh, in between these periods, certain stories have found new ways to... The most successful screen, blah, 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 which leads us to Mandalorian, another change in the growing style. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. For start, we learned that the events of the Mandalorian take place following the conclusions of Return of the Jedi. This means the Luke Skywalker and Rebellion succeeded, and the Empire is in disarray. So, so it's after Return of the Jedi. So this makes sense. So basically, that's what I thought. That I wanted to confirm so that no. That one makes sense from the trailer because then they have like stormtrooper like helmets and. Right, like but I believe what they also have said that this is actually going to lead to. Um, the creation of the First Order. So we're going to see that in the show. The First Order Yes. Of... The First Order is the new Stormtroopers that you see oh, okay. in, like, when we... Yeah. The ones that are with uh, the new trilogy? Mm-hmm. What's the first one called that again? Uh, Return of the... No, Return of the Jedi. Uh, uh, Rise... What was it? The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens. There you go. So it's The Force Awakens. You call yourself a fan, dude? The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and then it's going to be uh, Rise of the Skywalker. Is that so, coming out? Yeah, it comes out December. It's going to be a busy year this year. For you? Or for them? For everybody. No. I mean, it's the end of that one, and they've already, Daisy really has already said she's done. Okay. So, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. So, Sorry it took so long, but I'm going to clarify. It takes place after episode four. Are they still going to make more, like, side movies? Yeah. Um, Even my, after uh, Han Solo did terrible? It, the problem was it didn't do terrible. Did it? Everyone was complaining about it. It was just the way that the movie was done. Everyone, Darkest movie I've ever here, seen. Here's the problem, though, is everybody is all about talking bad about all these movies that are made, and they're not made for you. They're made as a movie. That's the problem. That's why they were aiming for a Logan-esque type of thing, and it didn't work. You know what I mean? The, the shots were so dark. that You couldn't really see anything. Well, you know, they complained about that in Game of Thrones, too. Yeah, but Game of Thrones takes place at night, so... <laughs> But I have a question. You're would you consider yourself a super fan with certain things? Certain things, yeah. Do you think super fans have made certain things toxic? 
Um, I think there's. I think the people that make it toxic are the super fans, who are always like, "Well, I was original. I was an original super fan." You know what I mean? Like they're, they're like, they're super negative about everything that's not according to the way they want it to go. Here's the problem, though: it's never going to go the way you want it to go, and that's why we're anti Rotten Tomato. Is because if you if you looked, Titus Titus has started the Chappelle the uh, Chappelle's new stand up special. Did you see what happened with um, comparing him and Amy Schumer's last special? I. I don't watch Amy Schumer. Okay, okay yeah. I don't so, even know oh, who that is. She was certified fresh. Was and she? then the critics' reviews were down in the dumps. It was like 10%. Because that's what it is. You pay, pay Rotten Tomato gets paid to make people look better. She's not funny. I She's don't not it. funny. And the one thing that made me mad was there was a, a thing, a, a thing they're like, oh, she was heckled so bad she had the man escorted out. Because he said, show us your boobs or something like that. So she literally can't handle a heckler that said, show us your boobs. That's the, like, from what I've heard from comedians that talk about, like, getting heckled, that's yeah. number one. They have that comedian who has a stutter that he literally posts all the times he gets heckled on his Facebook page. And he's, he's a champ at it. He fights them back, he starts making jokes at them, and he makes the comedy set even better with, on the fly. Name the last female comedian that you saw doing stand-up that made you laugh. Um, uh, was it Ali Wong, I think it is? She's really, I like her a lot. She's pretty funny. She's pretty funny. I don't know. I, I, dude, I'm... If you, if, you, if you have not watched her special... I've watched uh, one of them where she's pregnant. Yeah. She's really she's really good in that. I like her in that. I like her. She's also... She's the one behind that Always Be My Maybe on Netflix. Really good. Um, and I haven't seen... Um, who's the loud one that was in that movie? Roseanne. Uh-uh. Mm. Amy Schumer. Mm-mm. She's a loud one? Aren't they all loud? She was in the thing with Chris, um, uh, Kevin Hart, in that night school. Night school. Mm-hmm. Tiffany Haddish. I don't know who that is. I heard she was really, really good in her stand-up. Never too. heard of her. Mm-hmm. She's the Groupon chick on TV. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Is she Asian? Mm-mm. She's black. She's the one that was like threatening to hit oh, kids, yeah, yeah, hit yeah, kids yeah. in the ball pit. Yeah, yeah. I heard her stand-up special is very, very funny. Is she on Netflix? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Check that out. So, I mean, so always just go with your gut, you know? Yeah, but I thought Chappelle's show was, or the stand-up, was pretty fun. Stand-up, solid, stand-up, solid uh, special. I don't understand what people are upset about, because you made fun of people. I don't, <laughs> he's a comedian, these he are jokes. He had a problem, he said something, he said something about um, transgenders, oh my and um, he doubled down on it, and people don't like that. You know, instead of saying, hey, it's a persona, I'm a comedian, like Kevin Hart did when he got talked down to when he did the Oscars. It's one of those things. But in that case, like, I think super fans, like, if you're a diehard Chappelle person, I think that's what's pushing him through. Because so many people do think it's funny comedy special and it's just, it's comedy. I don't, like, any, I, I talked to people that saw it and they laughed. They enjoy, enjoyed it. I haven't met someone that I know that didn't like the special. I, I think the biggest thing is, is... You just gotta enjoy what you enjoy, and that's the problem. Is everyone's afraid that if something's inappropriate, like mind you, things do cross lines, and there are people. Like personally, I think if you make a living as being a comedian as a persona, like you're not even like Larry the Cable Guy. He's not like that in person. He's not no, like that in real life. Does he life. have that accent? No. Is he from like Kansas? I don't even know where he's from, but I know that he doesn't. He's, he portrays himself. So if you get offended by one of his jokes, you have all right to be you have all the right to be upset with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was a good show. I, thought, I recommend it. Well, have you haven't finished it yet. Yeah, I think I finished most of it. It was kind of on in the background. I kind of watched it. But well, I, I thought it was good. I heard he drags on like he'll do sets in L.A. at different places, and he, his sets will go on like two hours, three hours, and they just kind of drag sometimes. He just having a conversation. Yeah, it's so, kind of a style. He's right. One of those guys that just like, so, I think him and uh, Louis, Louis C.K. just don't really have a, they have some ideas what they're going to talk about, but they don't have like set jokes. Yeah, so, I mean, but back to the fandom, I think that's one of the things like everybody is always, here's the problem. If, if we were a podcast who was paid for by a company we didn't like, we would be sellouts, correct? Yeah. Well, now everyone thinks that if you're taking money for anything you're doing, you're a sellout. But how are you supposed to make a living doing what you're doing? You know what I mean? So, I think, I think the problem is, too, is they want you to conform. Like, 
That's why I remember when um, comedy shows started getting really big on um, Comedy Central. They do the remixes and whatnot, and they're doing all these half-hour comedy specials. People, I heard people having problems because they would show up to comedy shows and they would yell, "Do this or do that," you know. Ah. They're yelling. They go, "This isn't a request line. They're doing comedy, man." So, I think the internet has kind of made fandom to the next level. And um, ironically enough, if you do ever have any questions about anything Star Wars, Wikipedia is where you got a database for Star Wars. There you go. And it's amazing because they don't take the legend stuff getting removed as canon. Because it's still out there. It's still story, Star Wars stories. They're just not canon with the movies. What I like about it is, is they explain every single thing in the timeline. So when it got removed, what it did to the rest of the movie's franchise, how it affected this, how it affected that. So it's very detailed, and I really appreciate what they do. And they're super fans. So it's not like they're like, oh, we're going to ignore. No, they're like, you know what, this happened. We're going to roll with it. This is what we're going to do. Bam, done. No problem at all. So... You know, you can have good fans. Let us know all of our places, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, look at the end of the YouTube video. I put, post them all on there for uh, what we got going on there. But, yeah, just, I mean, let us know because some people are fans of certain stuff. Like, I think the worst one of recent history was, there was two. They made the Doctor and Doctor Who a female. Right. And then they wanted to make James Bond uh, black. Yeah. And I thought Idris Elba would have been phenomenal as the f- James Bond. Have you ever read the books? No. They're insanely racist. Yeah. Like oh, insanely no. racist. Well, no, and that's what I heard. Um, I used to listen to a podcast called James Bonding, and they said, hey, if you read the books, that... Fleming was insanely racist. And I have heard it's passed on to his... Because they're, they're, still, they're still in charge of the stories. Okay. So I think it's maybe a daughter or a granddaughter is in charge of his estate, basically. And I didn't know that basically most Bond movies are like pieces of different books all put into one type of thing. So, yeah. But I was so stoked. And people were just up in arms. And I'm like, why does it matter what race he is? I go, it doesn't... I go, if you've ever heard Idris Elba talk, he's a very... I, I love his British accent... He seems like he play the part well. And then what do they do? They go, hey, we're going to make it woman and black. So have fun with that one, fans. That's and I'm the black. new James Bond? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Female and black. And the rumor is is she's going to be introduced in the new James Bond film, Bond 25, with Daniel Craig. So I'm hoping it happens, fingers crossed. But Doctor Who, they just dealt with it. And now she, they let, everyone loves her. So I feel like... Especially, it's kind of weird now because it's gotten even worse now because when you look at people, they're like 100% against it, 100% for it. And then it battles out, battles out, battles out. And then everyone forgets what happens. And then you forget parts mixed in. Like with Game of Thrones, everyone hated the ending of it. They forgot all the great stuff that happened, all the bad stuff that happened. You're not going to make every single person happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not pulling a Walking Dead, which everyone can agree is not a good show anymore. Is that still on the air? It's still on. Dang. But everyone can agree it's not good anymore. Thought, That's the thing is. I, think, I thought people left that show. They've started falling off quite a bit. Really? Mm-hmm. Is the series done for the... I have no idea. I don't know, man. The Supposedly, some stuff is happening for The Walking Dead that's made people like, ooh, we're going to do this kind of thing, get excited. But, I mean, we'll see. But to move on more positive, we'll, we'll go, I'll go super negative right now. Super negative, but I was right about this. Um, side note, make sure you watch Mayans, MC. Phenomenal show. Um, great example of someone doing the right thing. Kurt Sutter, after the season, is handing over the show to his um, co-creator, who is of Hispanic dispent, d- descent. And he's like, I feel like he would put the uh, a better Hispanic twist on it. So he's letting him run the show after the season. So I'm excited. The first two episodes are phenomenal. Uh, third one goes on Tuesday night. So very good show. Um so, GameStop. When's the last time you were in a GameStop? I think when I worked at a group home, some of the kids would go there to buy a game. So, like, how long ago? 2014? So, about five years ago. Yeah. And it was, what did it look like in there? When you went in there? Did it look like the people in there? No, like the store. How did it look? It looked fine. Okay. I mean, this was before PS4 and new Xbox. Downloadable content, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, they're going to be shutting down 200 stores. 
I mean, that seems like that should have happened two years ago. Right? Like, I thought it was already gone. Well, my, po- my post on Facebook was like, whoa, but yeah, we kind of all saw this coming. Especially with the fact that you can go to Amazon, pre-order a game, get the special little bundle. You can go on your PS4 or Xbox One, pre-order, get a little special thing. Um, I mean, I honestly don't see... And they're, they um, they do warranties for... Well, they used to when I went there a long time ago. Right. They don't even do the warranty stuff. They send that all out. So they're losing money on fixing games and stuff. I think I bought one game there. Mortal Kombat 9. That was it. Last game I think I got from them was I pre-ordered MLB The Show. I want to say it was like 14 or 15. And after that, I've just been pre-ordering it on my PlayStation because I can play it at uh, 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. our time because it drops at midnight on the East Coast. I guess, you know, uh, GameStop hasn't heard of, like, Blockbuster or Hollywood Video. Like, those places are just going to go well, down. Well, Hollywood Video had Game Crazy in it. That's right. And what people don't know, if you look up Circuit City or Game Crazy, they're still on the internet. So they still go. they still sell stuff on the internet. That's really good. So, I mean, so, uh, goodbye GameStop. Um, we'll stick in the um, the gaming area. Uh, super excited. When I was in Minnesota, they dropped the um, Super Nintendo um, gaming. for If you have a yearly subscription to uh, Nintendo Switch Online, they give you, like, a bunch of free... Um, Nintendo games, and they just dropped the Nintendo, Super Nintendo uh, series. So I was playing some Yoshi's Island and stuff like that. So it was pretty fun. Um, and then let's see. I don't think I have any more gaming news. Blah, 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 blah. Nope, no more gaming news. What about music new? news? Um, Tool dropped an album? Tool I- did. I actually started listening to the new Post Malone album. I like it a lot. Uh-huh. It came out when I was in... Um, in Minnesota, I started listening to that. Are you going to see him at the Fresno Center next Saturday? Post Malone's going to be there? Yeah. I don't so, know. No? Wow. I'm there. I don't fit in with that crowd. Really? I walk in there with a cowboy hat and some boots, and I would not fit in kind of thing. Really? But, you know, hey, he had that, um, his his buddy at that one festival when he went platinum, I think he did, I think he brought, it was platinum or he went gold. I can't remember. When his record sold so many, this guy brought a mariachi band to sing congratulations to him. It was pretty funny. It was pretty cool. Um, so then let's go to uh, so much stuff about renewals, revivals. So let's talk about this. I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, Game of Thrones is working on a prequel right. called Fire and Blood Okay. about the Targaryens. Okay. So how do you feel about that? I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a little peek. I think uh, if it's not good, I think by... Uh my tolerance for the show is a little less because of how bad the ending was. Kind of like how rushed it was. Um, so I'll give it a shot. I think but if it's not good, I'm not going to watch it anymore. I think being in the same world, dealing with the family we know the history of slightly, I think it's going to help it a little bit because you're going to get little things like, um, no spoilers here, but something happens with one of the dragons on um, in the end of the last episode. I think we might that might help because we might get explanation as to why the dragon did that. Okay. So that might lead to some people watching it more, like, "Oh, dude, did you see what happened with the dragon? Right. We know so much more now, so it makes sense." You, you okay. know, what I mean? you know what I'm talking about. Exactly yeah, yeah. what I'm talking about. I know. What I'm talking about. So you could have that. Um, apparently, from from my from the podcast I listened to about Game of Thrones, they've talked about the Targaryen family and what they went through, and there is so much material already there to work on. Are you reading the books? No. I have them all. I need. I should have taken it with me to Minnesota instead of drinking at the bar or watching football and baseball. I should have, you know, du- should have been re- reading a re- book. book. But uh, I'm going to start working on that in between editing videos and posting stuff. I'm going to try and do that. But I'm super excited for that. I'm also... When is that dropping? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just still in the works. Okay. But I'm also very excited. I have a think you know what? Side so note. I bet you they're going to try and tie it into the, the other prequel. I There's bet you... two prequels. No, just game. one. Okay. Just one Game of Thrones prequel about right the, now. What other prequel are you talking about? This one, the Targaryen one. Oh, uh, okay. I think they'll probably try and... Maybe they'll try and introduce a character in the other one and lead him into the Targaryen one. Oh, okay. See so the little crossover. Um, but the one I'm super excited about, the revival of Supermarket Sweep. They're bringing it back? No way. Yes. Which, Dude, which channel? I don't know. Do you remember that show? Yes! When you hear that beep, I want you to think about Supermarket Sweep. Dude, it was it was on the Christian channel, wasn't it? Uh, I want to say it was on like Ion when we were in high school. 
I don't remember. It was on like Ion or something. I remember the dude had the best fake smile. That's where. That's why. That's why I watch guys' grocery games. Thank you, Andrew. Did you hear about Andrew's new rating system? Uh, the guy Fury. Zero to ten guy yeah. guy f- fireies. Yeah. So, but I'm super excited about that. What I'm not excited for is uh, redoing Face Off. The movie. Yeah. Who's gonna be in that one? I don't know, but why? How do you beat Nicolas Cage in that? How do you beat Nicolas Cage playing John Travolta playing Nicolas Cage? It's confusing. I don't know how you can do it. You're not. You're gonna fail. You're gonna fail every time. Fail. It's Nicolas Cage at his prime. Before he got crazy. Well, he was crazy then too. Do you know who's his? You know he's related to Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. Yeah, because his name is not. Uh, his name is Nicholas Coppola. Yeah. But he didn't want anyone to give him any work based on that, so he went by Nicolas Cage. And I think he actually had a different name he wanted, but... Someone else already had it. Someone already had it. Yeah. So I was kind of like, man, this is... It's dumb. It's really dumb. Yeah, I feel like that's going to fail. It's going to fail. Let us know how you feel about the face-off. Yeah. Not good. Facebook.com is a swimming cast. Twitter. FOMO underscore cast and FOMO podcast on Instagram. Um, so we watch the trailer right now. Let's talk about the first one. How did you like the Between Two Ferns trailer? It was good. I'll probably watch this on Netflix. It was shot on like uh, Galifianakis. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say his name. Zach Galifianakis, yeah. Galifianakis. Uh, he was in my favorite movie growing up, Out Cold. Okay. Where he literally had an outtake that was like five minutes long of him talking about how tight his pants were. And he's like, these these pants are cramping my hardy boys, and this is no mystery. It looks good. He's gonna have like a lot of big names, Hollywood names. A lot, and a lot. What's funny is, so he's not he's playing himself in a movie. So those of you who don't don't know, this is not. It's 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 a weird concept. It's based on his comedy show, his skit on College Humor, where he would interview people. Right. And in the trailer, you see that he quote unquote killed. Um, uh, McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey, but he's brought back to life. But it looks like Will Ferrell plays the producer. Like Will Ferrell's not playing himself. Right. So it just looks it looks phenomenal. But I'm actually more excited for. I'm not gonna go to the trailer. This is Netflix. You mentioned Netflix. Did you see the trailer for Wrinkles the Clown? No. What is that? So, it's this clown. I don't know where he's at. And it was in the news, where he would he'll show up and he'll like scare you, scare your kids or scare you or whatever and he was born of the clown craze from it and he, it's a documentary about him basically about it shows him walking around scaring kids doing stuff they might have some reenactments in it or whatever but so is it a documentary yes okay so that was did that happen a while ago a couple years ago like yes. people dressing up as clowns yes. and hanging out and he floors. and what he said was is he goes i was not getting any phone calls to be a normal clown so I figured I'll make some money being a creepy clown. And How do you make money? So people would pay him to scare people. He put a flyer up and said, hey, just call this number, tell them a place and a time, and I'll be there and I'll, I'll scare them for you or whatever. It's a very dangerous job. Very dangerous, but hey, he was making money doing it. So it looks, it looks phenomenal. If it's That's not, interesting. It, it looks... It's, it looks... Because I thought it was like a horror movie, and then they're like, it's a documentary, and I go, maybe it's a... I thought maybe it was like a fake documentary, so I'm not 100% yet. I need to do more research, but Wrinkles the Clown, watch it, because uh, I'm not going to be able to watch it right away, because i got too much other stuff to watch. Interesting. Um, so let's go to the other trailer, because it's kind of a weird one. Um, Original. Jojo Rabbit. Oh, my goodness. That is crazy. So, not PC. Not PC know. at all. I don't know how they were able to make that movie. I think it's because the, the, the theme of it when you meet the girl, you know, because it's basically... Um, so the premise is, is, is it's a boy and his friends are in, what do they call them, the junior, the junior Hitler, SS? Or Hitler, Hitler Youth. Hitler, Hitler Youth. Hitler. They're in the Hitler Youth. There you go. And they basically, legitimate kids became SS members because of it, because they were right. more trained. And so when they went to the military, they were basically ready to go. And so it's based on the Hitler Youth, and this kid and his friends are getting into hijinks, basically training to be Nazis. And... Um, the main character, Jojo, is his imaginary friend is Hitler. So, Good yeah. And then um, he finds out that his mom is harboring a um, Jewish person in their attic. And he's discussing with Hitler. I mean, this isn't spoiling. It's in, it's in the trailer. 
and he's like, I don't know what to do. And Hitler goes, I don't know either. And then they talk at the same time where the kid says negotiate and Hitler says burn the house down and blame Winston Churchill. And it's like, it's not, this should not be comedic, but it's hilarious. It's pretty funny. And ironically enough, the, um, the, I believe the main guy that walked in and said, Hail Hitler, and that group of guys, I'm pretty sure he's Jewish as well. So it was really weird. Like, it's almost like they're trying to, because it's by Ta- uh, Taiko Waikiti. So he does, like, very forward thinking and kind of experimental, you know, stuff. Like, it was singing that song in German. Um,. You know, I mean, so it's, it's a pop song, an uh, older pop song uh-huh. in German. So it goes along with the theme. Um, but, uh, and, it, and it's Scarlett Johansson, I believe it is, that's playing the yeah, mother. I think so. And she looks phenomenal. And it, you can feel they do a very good job about having it light and fluffy. And it changed to a more serious but still comedic. And um, I think the reason why they got away with it, because there is one point in the trailer where the guy, the girl, the Jewish girl, tells JoJo... Um, you're not a bad person. You're a child who wants to dress up and wants to be a part of a club. And that's... A lot of those kids, that's what it was, you know? Like I don't the, think they had much of a choice. The scariest episode of Hoarders I ever watched. You're sitting there and there's big guys in a chair. This <coughs> house is disgusting. It's gross, 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 gross. And like, what do you think made this to you? Did, made you what happened to you that made you, you know, do this? And he goes, oh, my dad was an, was an SS officer. And they're like, wait, What? And he legit has pictures of him in uh, Europe. Looks like 100% Sound of Music. Later hosen, blonde hair, everything. And, you know, you forget about that stuff because it, it is, you know, 70 years ago. Over 70 years ago. It's not that long ago, though. When you really think about it. It's not. But it's not every day. Like, you know, the current wars we have going on. You hear about something every day that something's happening. Something's fighting. Blah, blah, blah. It's kind of been foreshadow to this movie brings a little light to it because they had that World War One we talked about not too long ago mm-hmm. that me and Andrew I think talked about it I don't know if me and you talked about it I don't so World War One with um, Colin Firth yeah yeah that one yes yeah. so I mean they have a lot of these movies that come out now you know they had Dunkirk all these little ones and I like I like it I hope the comedy doesn't overshadow the actual seriousness of everything because I do have a feeling the serious moments are not going to be the comedic the comedy is going to be more like a dark comedy-like thingy because the very end, one of the kids is his friends, waves at him and drops a rocket launcher and it blows up a building. And he's like, oh, God. And he's like, it's really not a good time to be a Nazi right now, is it? And, like, it's supposed to be comedic, but you can also feel the tension. And well, A lot of those kids, like, they defended Berlin because Nazis were getting, you know, getting beat up. So they just had the little kids and old men defend Berlin. Yep. So Hopefully he shows that, too. I hope so. I hope so. It does a little accurate accuracy. And I have a feeling, the way Taika Waititi is, I have a very strong feeling that they're going to portray Hitler as the, the imaginary person is very evil in the very end. So, And speaking of which, Taika Waititi is going to be in the, the new James Gunn Suicide Squad. No way. They did a list. It's insane. It's, it's got too many people to list. Uh, two of them that I can remember are John Cena... And, um, oh, what's his name? I love him. Uh, he's on, he was the, on Firefly, and he was Castle on Castle. Uh, Nathan Fillion. He's actually the voice of Nathan Drake on um, uh, Uncharted. Um, he literally says, uh, don't get too attached, or something like that. Like, he has a thing across it, like all the names on it. It's a bunch. I'll show you afterwards. It's insane how many names are in this thing. It's beautiful. I'm love it. I'm super excited. Um, let's see. Got the Tiger Man one done. All right. Oh, um, last thing of TV news. Uh, South Park got renewed for three more seasons. I stopped watching. I caught some of it on Comedy Central when I was in my room changing. And I was like, man, this comedy is still good. Yeah. Like, if, you, if you've ever heard them do interviews, you know what their joke is? They're like, we're never going to change for anybody. We're going to keep making filthy humor. He goes, I got a fishing pole in my car. The day that I get fired, I'm going fishing. Because they literally have like a four-day turnaround. They literally, they, the, I think the show comes out on Wednesday or Thursday. Right. They take off Friday and Saturday. Then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, they go through and they do all of the animations. And then Wednesday, it gets sent over to them and they decide whether they're going to play or not. Really? It's very quick turnaround. They said it used to be a couple months. Now it's like a, it's like a week to two weeks. That's insane. Yeah. 
Well, now they're not like they first they were cutting out like paper and all doing all that stuff, right? It's a little more time consuming. Yeah, now I guess they have a program that I believe one of their animators helped develop that is basically keeps that same animation style but on a computer basically. So it's like um, basically like it's like an Illustrator, but it basically. Do you guys talk about the Righteous uh, Gemstones? No. On HBO Mm. with Danny McBride. Oh, dude! Oh my God! I accidentally put that thing on. Yeah. And I just caught a part when he was chasing someone with a gun. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, I gotta watch this. It's crazy. Is it a good, you watched it? I watched it, yeah. Is it good? If you like Danny McBride, it's a standard Danny McBride, like Eastbound and Down, Vice okay. Principles. Okay. If you enjoy those Perfect. shows, then you're gonna love this John show. Goodman's good in it? John, he's solid. He plays okay. a patriot, you know, he's a... He's the dad, he's yeah. He's the dad. Because I remember he says, Daddy, they go like, Daddy, you can't say that. Something like that on one of the things. We won't say it on here because I'm sure it's super inappropriate. But they're like, Daddy, you can't say that. So, it, so it's good. Roger's Gemstones is good. Yeah, I okay. give it zero. Zero uh, Guy Fieri's. Yes. Ooh. If you were Dan McMahon Fried. That's top. Hey, Eastbound and Down, I have the bobbleheads right there. Two of them. I got the one with him in all black on the jet ski, and I got the one from when he's with the Braves. Yeah, yeah. So I love Danny McBride. Then he's amazing. Okay, I'm going to have to watch it then. Man. So... To finish it off, kind of, I watched two movies. I watched The Long Shot, and I watched uh, Late Night. Late Night? What was that with? Late Night's the one with Mindy Cowling, um, where she plays the writer oh, for writer. the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was I that watched, any good or no? Um, it was actually phenomenal. Okay. It was really, really good. And it actually shows, like, um, how I've heard it really is for people writing for, for shows like that. That's why they don't last long. They usually try and get onto a sitcom or something where it's a little bit more normal life, kind of. Um, so you have that. I recommend it. It's on Amazon Prime. So I watched that's how I watched it. was Amazon Prime. It was also on the flight. I didn't watch it on the flight. On the flight home, I watched Hocus Pocus because it's Halloween time. I love Hocus it's Pocus. It's September. It's Halloween time ready for me, bud. What? I love Hocus Pocus. When does Halloween Hocus start Pocus? Bro, yesterday I had my Witch Please shirt on that had Bette Midler from Hocus Pocus. You're hardcore. I love Halloween. It's a good time of year. Is it your favorite holiday? No, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because I'm fat. I love food, so... Um, but a really good movie I really like the concept it's very serious it's not like um, it's not a laugh out loud comedy it's more of like a serious but here's a little bit of funny stuff here and there really good Um, and I also watched The Long Shot which is Catherine Heigl and Seth Rogen oh like they got back together from Knocked Up right no not Catherine Heigl god I keep saying Catherine Heigl it's Charlize Theron wow Charlize Theron and 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 um, how was that? It was freaking great. She yeah. is so good in a comedy. It is not even funny. And then Ice Cube's son, what's his name? No clue. She, it's Ice. O'Shea. It's something O'Shea, I believe it is. He is freaking hilarious. Really? Dude, he made that movie. He is so funny. Like, she's funny. The, like, even the little menial players on the side are hilarious. June Diane Raphael, who I didn't even hear talk about this movie, her being in it. Barely on her other podcast. She's on How Did This Get Made. I loved her in it. She played an amazing character in that. Um, and then they had the other guy. I can't remember his name, but he's been in a few things. But there's so many. And then it has, um, what's his name from Better Call Saul? The lawyer? Yes, the main guy. Oh, he's in so much stuff. He's in a bunch of stuff. He's a, co- he's a comedian. But yes. Like trade, right? He's hilarious. He's funny in this movie, too. It was literally, I was shocked at how funny it was. Because I figured it was going to be a slapstick comedy. Because in the trailer, they show him, he falls down these stairs in the trailer from the movie when it first came out. And that is not what it is. It is a very serious movie. It has consequences. It's actually, it's a, it's actually works well as a romantic comedy. But um, it was phenomenal. I loved it. Um, thanks, God, for being able to watch that stuff on there. You know, right. Praise to Jesus. Okay. And also, make sure, like I said, watch Mayans MC, because it's getting freaking fantastic. And for those of you that are Sons of Anarchy fans, the ties that um, that come in are coming in more and more. They actually, in the last episode, come up to Stockton. Really? Yeah. That makes sense. So they're in Stockton, and it, it, it turns not that great, so... What? Yes. Every time I go to Stockton, I have a good time. Oh, yeah, me too. Homeless people and, and, uh, and uh, fires. Uh, but I'm trying to think what else... Anything else you've seen coming out maybe on TV that have you, have you interested at all? I know that start, everything's starting up pretty soon. I've been still watching Succession. It's still okay. good. Okay. Second season's grow up underway. Yes. Still enjoy it. So Succession's on and something else is. Isn't this going to be the last season of Homeland or something like that? I don't know. I've never watched the show. Homeland was really I thought it was good. already 
over. The first season was phenomenal until you realized when they got renewed because it was only supposed to be one season. Right. And you can tell where they uh, where they changed what was going to happen. You could feel it in the episode. So um, I'm excited for that one. And then, um, like I said, I did watch Night School. Night School was pretty good. That's I watched one. like two minutes of the new True Detective and turned it off. It's not good. Did you ever watch it? I, I had the first season on DVD. I liked the first the season. It was great, yeah. Not that it was a dog. Maggie, stop. I don't know why she's barking. She just wants to make the podcast at least once, I guess. There you go. She just realized Titus was still here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's so much shows that are going to be coming out. Um, I'm going to start watching The Boys tonight because apparently The Boys, they're saying is better than every single Netflix show ever made on Marvel. So I'm excited for that. Um, I also, The Man in the High Castle last season was supposed to come out. That was the very first show I ever wrote a view review on and got swag for it. Really? So I was super excited about it, yeah. So, um, you know, make sure to go check out um, all of our social media. My personal social media, if you want to follow me on Instagram, is uh, G-R-Y-Z-Z-L-C-E-O. That's Grizzle CEO for the Parks and Rec fans out there. I used to be Texas Poon Tappa, but I decided to change it. No, I gave it away. I was like, no, I don't need it anymore. I'm going to go on to Grizzle CEO and make that one popular. Um, but our stuff is facebook.com slash photomocast, Twitter, FOMO underscore cast, a FOMO podcast on Instagram, and youtube.com slash FOMOcast podcast. Search FOMOcast on YouTube. Um, it's been a great week. I'm going to be a little bit more regular now that training's all done. Um, so I'll try and get some stuff in there here and there. I'm going to have a little sports side chat possibly with one of my buddies who knows a lot about football. Really? So I want to get him out there, do a little FOMO cast sports. Fantasy football? Maybe a little bit fantasy, yeah. Because um, uh, as uh, Titus knows, Drew Brees did not have a good day today. No, he didn't. So, um, yeah. So he's going to go uh, drown his sorrows out a little bit later today. I don't know. I still got a shot to win. <laughs> oh, wait. Well. Let's go lay on Bell. Good luck to Titus. Uh, Thank you. Tomorrow. I hope he does well, too, because the guy I'm playing is Odell Beckham, and I hope that Le'Veon Bell runs all over him and Odell Beckham does nothing so I can win. So, uh, for the FOMO cast, I'm Chris. And I'm Titus. And we will see you next time.